Okay, so Aditi is the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Penn State's Division of Development and Alumni Relations, where she is charged with developing policies, programs, and division-wide initiatives. As Director, Aditi carries out the Division of Development and Alumni Relations Strategic Plan and advances its four-part framework of priorities, the recruitment and retention, strategies for a diverse workforce, and initiatives to promote a welcoming and inclusive Penn State community. Aditi is responsible for coordinating with internal constituencies, university leadership, and external stakeholders to determine how the division throughout all of its initiatives, activities, and programs can be reimagined to build a culture of inclusivity that affirms the dignity and contributions of all its members and the alumni, donors, and friends that it serves. She has presented at national and international conferences as well as professional development work workshops that have a diversity, equity, inclusion, and engagement focus. Aditi has over a decade of experience in higher education, administration, student affairs, and academic affairs. Aditi is a Californian and Michiganer, Michiganer who deeply values her Nigerian-American background, earned her bachelor's degree from Grand Valley State University in photography, a master's degree in counseling, adult and higher education at Northern Illinois University, and is a doctoral student in Penn State's workforce education and development program with a concentration in diversity, inclusion, access, and equity. Aditi's presentation title is Transformative DEIB Learning, how to keep a positive and inclusive atmosphere in the workplace. Aditi. Thank you, Penny, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending where you are in the world. Um, thank you for having me here um, today. I'm excited to talk to you all about transform transformative learning within the workplace with a DNI focus. Um, before I really get into what I was asked to speak about, I um, just want to let you know a few things, and it'll, it all ties in. Penny did a great job. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Um, but the the topic in which I'm talking to you about actually connects to my day-to-day -day work, um, and I'll get into it in a minute, but as Penny said, I am the Director for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion within a whole division, and that, as I said, ties into my overall topic. Wait, really quick. Penny, can you hear me okay? Okay, great. Thanks. I want to make sure. Now, as I say that, I just want to just set some ground rules and areas of where we're going today with this topic. I know most of you all read the description, um, but I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. So I was asked to come here today to talk about something that I did um, and then currently am doing within the workplace. Now, I first started this as part of a class project and assignment for a class I took with Dr. Brendel, um, but I really expanded it beyond that and into my day-to-day -day work. Um, I honestly cannot remember exactly what the original assignment was because I really changed it to really um, use it in my work. Um, so this presentation is going to be a little bit different than what I normally present. I usually focus on topics of DE9 and really push on that. Today, I'm really going to walk you through the process in which I uh, created something um, for those that I work with and using technology. Um, and I'd say in a very, uh, I call it an oldie but goodie way um, for this class assignment, but I'm still using today. But before we even get started with everything that I had done and the frameworks that I had. Um, the other thing is I like to be a little bit engaging as well in my presentations. So I have a question for the group and it's really, this is more of a thought question. So feel free to write it down if you have something in front of you or type it down. So my topic is focusing on inclusion and transformative learning in the workplace. And when you hear the term inclusion, especially in the workplace, what does that mean to you? is my first question that I want you to think about and maybe write it down somewhere. And then is true inclusion possible in the workplace and what does it look like for you? So I'll give you like 30 seconds to think about it and write it down and then I'll jump back in. Okay, hopefully everyone has had enough time to write down and really think about what does inclusion mean to you? What does it look like for you in the workplace? Um, 
again, before I jump into what I did, I want to back up and kind of explain a little bit of the assignment that I was asked to do for class that I've transformed into work. Um, part of what Dr. Brindle had asked us to think about in class as we were working on this assignment, which again, I can't recall fully what the scope of it was, but was to think about implementing something in the workplace and being able to write it down in 15 words or less. And this is really what I came up with in 15 words or less. I really want to, not just for class, but even day-to-day -day in my work, to inform, assess, and improve inclusion, inclusive behaviors from a DEI-DEI-A -E transformative learning perspective. And just to let you know, DE, DE and IA, um, there's a lot of different ways of saying this. There's JEDI, there's DEIB, um, all of it. I'm really encompassing diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as access. But I wanted to look at it, again, from a transformative um, learning perspective. Now, when I say transformative learning, I just want to give a little background on that as well. Um, I really, the question is, what is transformative learning? And this is, again, another part of my presentation where I'll let people unmute if they want, but does anyone know what transformative learning is or want to explain it in your own words or even guess what it is? Uh, can I just jump in here? Yeah. Um, transformative learning is learning that brings about change. Brings about change. I like that. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else want to jump in transformative learning? Well, I can help you out or anybody else have a guess anymore. Well, quickly, breaking it down really, it is a process. It's critically examining. Um, it's transforming, transforming your thoughts, ideas into something new, um, sometimes due to a new experience um, that helps change one's worldview and have a deeper meaning. And really this is, easy broken down way of explaining what it is. And this is all good and great, but the question is how do you do transformative learning? How does that connect to DEI? Which I'll get to the how does it connect in a minute. So when you really think about transformative learning, it is often facilitated in this way. It's first a challenging experience. Sometimes it is um, it breaks your paradigm of what you think. Um, it makes one reevaluate your assumptions. And then some of the ways that you can do it, um, some of the ways that happens is you're exposed as well to a new culture, facing personal challenges and crisis. And then it also sometimes has the confronting your biases and, and your prejudice. So keeping all of that in mind when I talk about transformative learning and I think about the workplace, when I think about my 15 words, um, I wanna connect again, just really quick, like transformative learning is the way in which we, the way learners interpret and reinterpret their experience. And that is key to making learning happen. And I wanna do this and connect it all with my 15 words and have it within the scope of d and in the workplace. Now, that's a lot of theory. That's a lot of what I've talked about really quick in what, like three, four minutes or so forth. But connecting this into the workplace is somewhat challenging at times. Um, and it's a lot to think about when you think about this framework. In addition to thinking about this framework, one thing I want to pull back into is the work that I said that I do for the Division of Development and Alumni Relations. Within the division, we have four goals. And these four DEI goals, I will show you here, I was inherited by my predecessor, which was great. Um, it connects directly to our strategic plan. And the goal is that these four goals, um, as you see here, diversifying our workplace, preparing current employees um, for greater cultural agility, engaging with diverse donors, alums, and perspectives, and so forth, and factors that contribute or detract from a welcoming, inclusive place. These goals, I would say, similar to most workplaces when you have a strategic plan. And these goals are connected to our strategic plan as well. But a lot of the times we, especially when you're working, you get these goals, these theories, these strategic plans, these missions that you have to follow, but how do you actually enact it? And one of my challenges when I first came into this role, my predecessor was great. She created this and then uh, kind of handed it off to me to connect it all was how do you do this? How do you actually connect your strategic plan, your mission and all of that? And, and how do employees really actualize this? So 
as I thought about this and thought about the context of what I was trying to do and thinking about transformative learning with the DEI focus, um, it, it's really hard for employees to actualize this. It's really hard for people to understand what does it mean to have cultural agility? How do we know the factors? How do I feel included within the workplace? So I wanted to make this easier overall. So this is where the work part comes in was, this was already a challenge I had at work of, how do I make this easier for people to um, quantify and see and actually um, do in the workplace? But then I'm also thinking about the assignment that I had with my class. And so I really wanted to do this again, taking it from transformative learning, those 12 words and break this down. So my goal of the, what I did was I focused on two primarily goals, which was address factors that contribute or detract, detract, detract from a welcoming place, and then prepare employees for more cultural, um, cultural agility within the workplace. Now, the way in which I did this, I um, selected a small group within my division. And again, I'm bringing in technology in a minute with all this. And what I wanted to really remember and think about um, in what I created was who am I informing? These are things that I always think about. Who am I informing? Myself as a professional. What am I assessing? I'm assessing multiple levels within my organization with multiple years of experience and roles. I really want um, individuals' behaviors to change and to think about that. And I hope to see that my individuals in the study that I did um, continue and continue this thoughts and ideas that came up in the study and with a positive mind, um, positive growth in mind. So what am I really doing and how? When I work in the space, especially when we talk about de and i I'm often thinking about how, again, do people actualize de and i into the work? How can I make professional development sessions? How can training um, be more than just, just that, just training, just a land acknowledgement, which is all important, right? Um, I would say sometimes we focus so much on what you can see, what you can see in terms of performative, but how do we really think about changing structural? How do we change people thinking in that way in terms of being structural? I really wanted people to think more about what does it mean um, beyond just all of what I just showed you and like the goals and strategic plan and so forth. So the problem sometimes that comes in when they hire someone to be in a role like my role is I'm done. It's okay. We have all DNI covered. The office of DNI and E has everything covered. I'm okay. And that's often, unfortunately, what some people in the workforce as well as leaders think about. But the work for, 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 I say the work cannot be just on one person. It is really everybody's responsibility. And that is a challenge sometimes to get people to understand and take some of that ownership. It's a shared and collective goal. And also is to affirm and help people accept and understand that everyone is different. Um, diversity, diversity and inclusion and the way that we see being, feeling like we're included in the workplace is different from each person and different um, depending on our life experiences. And I really wanted people to move beyond just those four goals and seeing it. So how I did this was working with staff, like I said, from all different levels within the, or within the organization to come together and really see it in like internally. Um, now, one other point I want to push is that when we talk about DEI, there is a strong benefit to look at um, explaining and proving like the, what I would say, like the profit and margins within DEI and why it's important. It's, it's important to explain the return on investment with DEI and why you should be doing this, key performance indicators and so forth. All of that is really, really important as well. But at the core of any of this work with DEI, um, it's really, really hard work. And it's not just hard work, it's heart work, meaning that like it comes a lot of the topics that we talk about within DEI. It is challenging for people because we're changing their paradigm, right? And changing their ideas. And so um, moving, moving beyond again the surface, but really how do you change the individual inside? So sometimes we try to overcomplicate it. And I just want to say sometimes it can be a little bit more simple and simple also as well with the technology that we use. So to do this, what I had done is I um, created a pilot um, transformative learning program series. 
And what I did is I did, I worked on pools and it caused a dis disorienting dilemma as people were going through these pools that transformative learning aspect to really change behavior. Now quickly, I'll talk really quickly about this. The population in which I use were some staff within my uh, division. I wanted it to be very small. Um, these people work in different departments. They work um, different departments within the overall division of 600 employees. Um, they've worked together for at least the past year. They're all different levels of the organization. And there was a top up, bot, top, sorry, top down, bottom up approach when I came to this. Um, they work in different parts, but some of them, well, most of them all work on the same floor within a building. And I had some people that were from my talent acquisition team, my fundraisers, um, budget and financial officers. Now, my population all together, again, I wanted it to be really small. I had some people that were remote, some people that were in person, um, and then one person that was 100% remote. And then the reason I picked this, Population, just to give you some background, is that they all had a commitment to DEI. They're thoughtful in their approach already, um, but they're also very busy people, and time set like time is of essence to them. And I wanted to be able to scale this up and see how this would work in other areas of my division. Um, I also have a close relationship with most of these people. I've worked with them in multiple areas, um, and they're also considered the um, behind the scenes in terms of behind the house, that they're not always, because I work in development, they're not always the ones that are on the road um, talking to donors, but they do all the stuff in the background. So what I did with this group is I pulled them together um, and I had them go through pulse surveys. And the reason I chose pulse surveys is that I really wanted, um, really wanted them to give full feedback on what they're thinking about, but I don't want of what of what they felt in some of the questions I was asking. But pulse surveys allow me to um, ask a question and then come back later and do that follow up. And so that's how I connected my transformative learning from DEI and with technology, all within the workplace, was using these pulse surveys. Um, Again, remember this work when I talk about DEI is from the heart, and sometimes people are very protective. And knowing that it is hard for people to kind of wind up talking and having a conversation um, in like a session like this, and that their time is really busy, I felt pulse servers were the best way to look at inclusion within the workplace and where they where they were located. The other reason I use pulse servers is that it's a really easy um, platform. People are very familiar with it. Um, I also used emails and other forms of Zoom to also connect with them. And this is one reason why I call them oldies but goodies, because again, in D and I work and anything with technology, we sometimes get caught up with the newest and latest and greatest thing when we have some really good things we already used. Other thing I did was over the course, so overall what I did was a course of four weeks, I sent out these pulse surveys to the individuals um, in my study. Everyone received an email with the pulse survey every Monday morning. And then um, they also were told that um, at the very end of the four weeks, we'll come together and talk. They were told that the pulse survey would take no more than five to 10 minutes. Um, and they didn't know who the participants were until I sent out the very first survey. I should also say it was very much focused on coming from a lens of appreciative, um, appreciative um, framework. And I really wanted to help raise um, mindfulness and for people to be intentional and look more um, within themselves. So quickly, an example of what I sent, this is just a quick example of the email that I sent to the group of, you know, you all are sending, you all agreed to be part of this pulse survey. This is your first survey for week one. Let me know if you have any questions. And again, this was a very quick um, email. This is the first time the group knew who was in this survey. So the first question I asked in this Pulse survey was, how inclusive were your work colleagues towards you in the past two weeks? Um, and again, I had them look at this on a Monday morning. And if they had forgotten to respond, I would then send them an individual email to remind them to send something out, um, to respond back to it by that Friday. So at this point, I actually have how much time? I think I'm gonna jump because I don't I actually have a survey for you all to do. And I asked you in the beginning to really think about um, how you felt included and what that meant to you. 
So if you can take a minute and think about this question for yourself and think about where you work, where you are right now. And I'm not sure if this is gonna send to everybody or just in this room. Penny, if I put something in the chat, if I put something, will it be sent to everybody or just people in this room? Oh, you're on, you're on mute. I can't hear you, Penny, you're on mute. Sorry, yes, just in this room. Okay, so think about this question. And hopefully this link works. If you see what I just threw there on, um, on the chat, if you can click on that, but answer the question for yourself as you think about the space in which you're in. And if you don't work and you are a student or maybe past work, how inclusive were your colleagues to you if you can think about it in the past two weeks? It's saying to me, I need permission. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. One second. I love how technology just does its own thing. Give me one second. Well, I don't think Google is going to work the way that I want it. So I apologize, everyone. Fun thing about technology, you just kind of have to be flexible sometimes with it. Well, wow. oh, I appreciate it. Someone just threw it in the chat. So if you feel comfortable, and I apologize if the thing didn't work, feel free to throw in what you feel. Like, if you think about the past two weeks in your workplace, how inclusive do you feel like your colleagues were to you? And only if you feel comfortable. If you don't, I absolutely understand. And the questions that um, you have three options, I should say, you have, you can say it's three. So it's very inclusive, it's a very inclusive, not inclusive, or just somewhat inclusive. Oh, great. Jamie, you were able to get in is what it looks like. I was too, I got in it. Okay, great. Thank you, Jamie, for throwing up there and helping me out. Yeah. Well, I have a mix of responses. You can still feel free to um, pop it in as we go through. But think about it. Um, again, Jamie did throw in the question in there. I appreciate that. Um, it's really how inclusive were they? Um, I felt that they were inclusive to me, they were somewhat inclusive to me or not inclusive to me at all. So when I asked this and I sent it out, move on to the next one. Um, one thing that the group did not know um, was that on the Friday, it was due by Friday for them to do this quick question, um, they received a second email to me, from me and it said, you know, hope you had a great week. Um, but I wanted to let you know the results of the people and what what the, what other people felt with this. This was my other aspect of doing a disorienting dilemma when I think about transformative learning, um, really showing them and having them understand. It's not enough for me to know and see that, okay, there's issues within the workplace and I can know that anecdotally, but it's also really helpful for people who are in that same workplace to see it themselves. Um, no, there were no... Um, indicators and who responded, but it was enough for them to see and make them think about, oh, this is what's going on, even though my perspective is a little bit different. So this is what they saw in that email that I sent. Um, and as you see, out of all the respondents that, that were there, we had one person who didn't feel included. Again, the population, the sample population that I had, they all worked within, within the same floor. Some are remote, some are not some of the days of the week. Um, they've known each other for years and they've worked in this uh, division. So to find out one person has not felt, in, felt included in the past two weeks. This is what they received on Friday. So then come, so I did the same process for week two. I asked, again, how inclusive did they feel? They got this on a Monday. I asked them to respond back by Friday at 9 a.m. However, the second part that I had them answer and respond to was, question one was this, how inclusive? Question two was, after seeing the previous results, the ones from last week and week one, 
How has your behavior impacted towards your colleagues? Now, in this case, I really wanted them to think about what they, as an individual, like what responsibility did they have, right? Did they have any responsibility? And my behavior changed after saying it, it mildly changed, or I don't feel like my behavior's changed at all and it stayed the same. So I had them answer this at the end of week two. Similar, week two on Friday, they saw this. And interestingly enough, everybody said by week two um, that they all felt included uh, by their colleagues. And there's a lot that you can read into this, right? Um, this could be true. There could be factors that, you know, one person, the one person that was outlier um, felt, you know, guilty and said, oh, no, I don't want people to think I don't and everything else and change the results for week two. Um, other people could have made a more, eff more effort into seeing if there's any change. There's, there's a lot of different reasons for this. Um, and then again, the same question after seeing the previous results, how has your behavior changed? Now, when you look at this, um, the red marks, if, I don't know if you can see it on your computer or not, but my behavior has changed. Um, so we had about 14% of people saying that. Um, a mild change was about 57%. So that kind of indicates, okay, it changed. People were really cognizant and aware and trying to. And then I had about 28%, and again, it's a small sample um, population that we're able to do this um, so that I don't feel that my behaviors changed at all. Furthermore, if you were to say the mild, the purple, another question that was given to them was you indicated that you were doing the work, but you need to do more. What can you do to make your environment more inclusive? And again, more reflective at asking them. So these are some of the results, and I'm not going to read them all to you, um, um, but these are some of the results that people said. So I had that open-ended aspect as well to get it, to get this information. I'll give you a minute to read. One thing um, I find uh, always interesting, again, I work with people and some of them travel and some of them don't. Um, the very last comment is sometimes we get so busy within our work environment that we will do things and just kind of ignore and keep on moving in the motion and not realize that our, how our behavior impacts others around us. And so I found it really um, impactful to see the last one. So then for the 28% that said, my behavior hasn't changed at all. I then took it as, okay, what can my office, again, I work in the DEI office, um, I run that office, what can we do to help you get there? So when you think about the first question as like, what, like how inclusive has your environment been? And then it's like, what can I do to help? Kind of that full circle and trying to pick that up a little bit. Week three. Fairly the same. Again, um, they all got the results uh, as well. I should say that they did not get the they didn't get any of the written responses, but they all got the results that you saw the circle pie pie um, charts. Um, week three, and they got that on the Friday. Week three on Monday, same thing. Asking the same question again, hundred percent here. Again, after seeing the previous week, which was week two, you know what has changed? Has you, um, your behavior has changed? I'm doing the work or I'm not doing, I'm not doing much of anything. And similar, same thing. What um, you indicated, you indicated that you're doing the work, but what was it? And these are some of the results that I'll give you a minute to read. And I found this really fascinating last one of like the intentionality of talking to people's stuff about DEI training. So I should say my office has been um, established, let's say 2019, since 2019. And the pre my predecessor has always done some DEI training, but it was always interesting to me that people are like, oh, now I'm gonna promote it because now I'm thinking about it on a weekly basis and thinking about how inclusive I'm being. So again, changing not just like the behavior and what you're doing, but even assuming if this is a manager, like how you're having those conversations with your staff. And again, you know, what can my office do, right? So 
I did this for three weeks um, and I ended week three a little different. Again, I added just a little bit more to this pulse survey because at the end of the day, I know that someone could say, you know, I felt included that I haven't done anything to change. And they get this question again, if you get, if you're the blue and you say, I haven't done anything to change, what can my office do? You always get this question. Maybe you never got, you know, what have you done? You didn't, maybe you don't, maybe you never get this question, right? You'd always get this question. So then I asked at the end of week, during the week three pulse survey, in addition to all that, everybody got this question is over the past three weeks now, how intentional have you been towards creating an inclusive work environment? So now I'm really asking about people's intent and what they're really doing. I'm really trying to push home with this question that the work of DEI isn't just on one person. It is not just on one office. Um, it's really beyond that. And then we all have a stake in this and it's, it's all very important. I'm really trying to change our culture and our thoughts of creating an work, uh, inclusive workplace and being intentional about it. And again, it goes back to like, what do employees value? I do think there's, again, a lot of um, importance placed on, you know, quantita qu quantifying and having the data there explaining DEI. But really, like, how do employees feel, right? What does that mean? And what does that really look like? Um, and again, I think we overcomplicate it. And that's why I really appreciate these pulse surveys. So you'll see that, you know, I have 28% of people saying I'm extremely intentional and conscious um, towards this. And then I have 71%, I'm somewhat intentional. The last question that I asked the entire group, again, was another open-ended question. And this is again in week three. Um, and it's really focusing on past three weeks, what behaviors, if any, have you done different to create an inclusive environment? And I'll give you a second to read it. Um, there were some names in there and because of the way that this was taken, I had to blur it out. So you'll see like a little pink cloud thing right here, but that's just blurring somebody else's name out. And so sometimes that little point of suggestion and the consistent suggestion is why I got like pulse surveys is I can do that. Um, changes, changes someone's orient orientation and the way that they're thinking about it, right? That transformative learning is happening. And I threw this up here again, just to kind of give you a breakdown of all the questions I did ask um, during the course of those three weeks. And again, it's to raise mindfulness, to raise intentionality, as well as more, and for people to look at their behavior and be more reflective and reflect again and again, which is a core part of transformative learning. So as I just said, like the other, the other part of this is um, heightening awareness of where they are and what they can help and contribute to the workplace and that every employee uh, is valuable in this workplace. And as a reminder, it started off with these, you know, these four goals. So when I look at these, the four, we have the four DNI goals. I'm sorry, I started off with these four goals that I broke down into just two and trying to connect to these two goals. Now, from here, during week four, the next thing that I did is I had the whole group come together. This is the first time the whole group truly came together and talked. And this is more of a discussion and I had an open discussion and I had about four questions that I asked the whole group at the end of week four. So they went through these pulse surveys for three weeks. I could have continued, but due to certain timelines and traveling, I wasn't able to, but week four, I actually had them come together. And as a large group, we discussed some of the, so their experience with us. So these were some of the questions that I asked them um, during week four of a larger group discussion. And this is the feedback that they um, sent back or that they said to me in front of the whole group of how they felt going through, through this process and what their initial thoughts were. Uh, I put a few of them, I italicized and I'll go through a few more, italicized a few of them that um, I felt were really important to highlight. So one person really said, you know, after seeing the results, which they've never done and seeing a pulse survey, usually you get the pulse survey and you don't have to see the results right away. Um, and it was really interesting for them. And it made them think, just like a few other folks, um, that they weren't really being inclusive or they were. And it made them really reflect back on themselves and what they had done. Mm -hmm. 
I'll give you, I'll stop talking so people can read. One thing that I'll note is that when we try to create an inclusive workplace, right? I asked you all that in the beginning, right? We really want to try to foster that inclusive workplace. And by doing that, it allows people to bring their whole authentic self to the workplace. And part of being able to bring your authentic self is sharing one's story, sharing one's perspective, sharing one's um, ideas. And so in doing this like fourth part in week four, I was really thinking about that and how important it is from any level of the organization, regardless of what you're doing, top down, bottom up, to share stories, to share experiences. That really helps open that door to not only create an inclusive workplace, but again, going to that whole, uh, there's a whole other point and I can get on a whole different talk, talking point about authentic self. Like how do you bring your authentic self? And some of, some of this is one way that you could do it. The other question I asked in this larger group, in this group, when we all came together during week four was, what do you think the goals were? So they didn't receive anything um, in terms of the goals. I showed you all the background formation, how I got here with transformative learning, all of that. The only thing my uh, participants received was that initial email. I went and asked them if they would. And these are the group of people who said, yes, I can be part of some study for you for class. Then they got the initial email of this is it and go through it. So now I'm wondering, like, did you actually get what I'm hoping out? Did I actually follow the framework and the goals that I had? And I'll give you a second to read some of the feedback on this. And as you read this, I, I want to remind you that week four was all of us coming together and talking. So I have this all written down. I had it all transcribed. So this wasn't them typing it out to me. Um, it really was them having a full discussion for about an hour. It was scheduled for an hour, went for an hour and a half, only left because somebody had to run out. Um, but it was a really full, um, rich conversation. And when I think of the first point, um, the person really pushed on the fact of their own privilege and really sit in the organization. They always assumed that, you know, people can bring them themselves, they, that people always felt included and that, you know, they report directly to a senior manager and they have a good relationship with them. And so this really brought a, a whole other level of privilege that they had that they didn't realize until they were going through this process. Another question that I asked during this time was, how did, you, how did your awareness of inclusion change during the past three weeks? To give a little context on the one below, um, as a division, we all meet together quarterly. And so it's about 600 employees all coming together quarterly at the University Park campus here at Penn State. Um, and this one individual, the last one, is really referring to the fact that she knew of people that came from a different part of our division. Um, because Penn State is large, we have people in our division that um, don't just work at University Park, but they work at all 24 campuses. Um, so when you all come together as a quarter, every quarter together, um, she just doesn't know everybody. And so she really thought, thought about more about being sensitive to that and just opening up herself, right? She made herself vulnerable. And I can say she, cause I know she was a she, but um, she made herself vulnerable in this, in this moment and talked to employees that she's never had before that are across the division. And that's, that happened all within the context of the three weeks that um, they were doing the surveys. During part of those three weeks, we had this large quarterly division. So she, she really thought all day, especially during this time about like how inclusive is she, what is her behavior even outside of taking these surveys outside of her floor that she works with everybody else? Um, what are her behaviors and other aspects? And one of the last questions I asked during like the hour and a half that we were together was this one, um, um, to proactively think about their role within DEI being in uh, internally and externally. Um, and not in with workplace and inclusion, and how do they plan, um, if they do it all, to continue to be proactive and think in this way? 
So then pushing again to another level of what are you doing beyond just these three weeks, these four weeks? How is this continuing for me, for you? So one of the stories I want to share with you quickly before I wrap up here is that um, there was a story that was shared during this time that's not on here that um, one of the people here talked a lot about thinking about it internally and externally and how do they think about DNI beyond this. And the way that they applied it and thought about it, uh, they brought up the fact that, you know, they go to work, they think about DNI, they go to DNI sessions that they like to go to. Um, but doing this type of pulse survey made them think of DNI in a different way. It's still the heart work, it is still hard work because it's a lot of reflective thinking. Um, but for this person, they talked a lot about when they think about DNI, they think about DNI and um, through the lens of what they said, like the 1990s, 2000 DEI trainings that they had to do through HR, right? And that's not what this felt like. It really felt like them growing as a person and thinking more creatively um, about their own impact in the workplace. But beyond that, they also took some of these questions from the survey and they talked to their partner about it when they went home that night. And in some of those conversations talking about it, uh, they were saying that they and their, their partner and them realized, okay, what does this mean to our family? How inclusive, they use, they use the same question and flipped and said, how inclusive do people in our family feel? How inclusive do our children feel? And this one person was describing the story about and made her, made them and their, par their partner think about the way that they treat their daughter sometimes and had them really be more interest, introspective on how inclusive they are as parents. Um, and in them sharing the story, they said that it was the first time that they actually took something that was DEI, um, professional development like this, and moved it outside of the workplace. They had always thought about DEI in terms of, okay, how do I be inclusive just at work with people being nice, being friendly, but how this is beyond just work. And it's also in other aspects of your life, not just your family, but even how you are with people in the store. And so it really transformed that person's perspective and thinking. And one of the ways I wrapped up that session, that last session was really trying to be a positive change and thinking about what that is, thinking about how this is everyone's work and that we're all doing this collectively. Um, this data is great to have because one, again, it's a quantitative and qualitative way of showing like the importance of DEI in the workplace, um, but also just some easy non-threatening ways to talk about DEI and also using technology in a simple way that most of my my people that I work with are successful. They know how to use it. Um, quickly, just let you know within my division, the next steps, um, whatever you do, anything like this, it's great to get the information, but there really needs to be um, action taken. And so it's great to get it, but you need to do more. And so some of the feedback that I didn't share with you all uh, was a little bit more pushing and personal that was going on within those areas. And so now it's informed me in my work in my office as well, in terms of how to take action and how to work with managers and, and knowing where we need to support them in different ways. Um, the other thing that is happening is this is expanding. This was a pilot, and so it is expanding to other offices. I'm working more with my talent acquisition office as well with this. Um, and it's expanding and doing this and doing a follow-up and doing within three months, six, and nine months is the next step. Um, I'm also working on looking at it in terms of coaching with managers and having them understand the way that they are or not creating an inclusive workplace and strategies and how to and what staff are saying. Um, and then I want to continue doing the focus groups um, and getting more information. And then this also can lead to other DNI topics. So other applications where I do see um, using this, um, there's psychological safety, which also is a large part of feeling included to being able to bring your own authentic self to the workplace. Um, accessibility education. I'm already starting something with, um, I have um, employees that are at Hershey Medical that we work with this and talk about in terms of accessibility aspect and using this type of survey and getting that from our staff themselves. Um, there's also decision-making, but this can be tied into fair treatment um, and then integrating diversity and differences. So I'm not sure how much time I have left, Penny. Um, so uh, you have 10 more minutes. 
Hundred minutes. Okay. okay so so I'm coming for Q and A. I was gonna say I thought I had Q and A, so I wanted to make sure. Um, I know I went through some of them pretty quickly, but I do want to say thank you for everyone who has come and listened to me talk about what I did and how I connected DEI technology and transformative learning in the workplace. Thank you. Um, can you see the chat there? Uh, Kevin asked, "Will we get access to your slides?" Oh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. And then Janine, she had, uh, uh, I really appreciate that this effort is considerate of the survey subjects time while increasing their awareness of their inclusive behaviors. Thank you. Were there any negatives? I mean, the positives are pretty amazing, but were there, did you find any negatives come out of this? Uh, come out of the survey or negatives from the responses of the surveys? Just over the over the course of doing this work. Um, well, as someone who was doing it, the negative for me was that it was quick within three weeks. Um, I really would love to do this much longer. Um, I had different timelines I was working with. And again, recognizing that I have people that travel sometimes internationally as well. And so that makes it hard. So that was a negative in terms of planning and designing it. Um, but the negatives that came out, there were some that I just didn't want to share and I can't share and I didn't share with the whole group. Um, but I did have some follow up conversations with some individuals. Um, they appreciated doing it and talking about it. But I would say that um, there, there are some true issues that people are like, I don't feel included um, and I, I don't see that and I don't know how to feel included um, with their own identity. And I would say it's also um, th there's some challenges there um, that I now need to address in different ways. Aditi, I'm wondering if you have- oh, Dr. Rothwell, I see you're on mute, but I can't hear you. I unmuted. You can't hear me? Oh, now I can. There's a delay. Um, I like your talk, but I'm wondering to what extent you've looked at the literature in OD on team building because it seems like there is a lot of relationship between inclusion as you've defined it and you've looked at it and all the team building literature, there's about 50 years worth of it out there. Yeah, I've looked at some of the literature on team building as well. I would say when I was creating this, um, my framework wasn't focused on team building, um, but I have looked at it. I think that is, again, like there's so much more to go with this and I know that there is. Uh, I did have a limited time to get this done and um, do it for an assignment, but also I want to do it for work. But the team building aspect is, as you say that, that is actually one of the reasons I should have said earlier that I'm connecting with my talent acquisition team um, because there's a lot that they do that's more of a different type of team building that doesn't always have a DEI lens to it hmm. um, for, for, for professional development for, within our division. And so I'm working more with that team and connecting that in terms of the team building, but not as not as in depth as I was with transformative learning in terms of that being my framework. All right. Um, actually, I'd like just like to add to it. Um, I had I had put in chat that I think carrying this even outside the workplace is essential to become more natural um, behavior, um, and maybe uh, we could also consider uh, youth. Uh, let's uh, start in uh, primary school and in high school, and and sort of create the future generations. Um, also to be more inclusive. So then whenever they do get to the workforce and, and otherwise they um, already have this education in place, right? Oh, absolutely, Bonnie. I appreciate you brought that up. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can incorporate this. Yeah. I think the challenge with DEI sometimes is that people, like I said earlier with my example, people situationalize it and say like, okay, I need to think about it just in this time, in this place, in this location. Mm -hmm. And it really, like I've said this a few times, like I would love my job to be obsolete because it'd be great for people to think about it all the time and in different ways and starting at a younger age. Like okay. um, to me, it was profound that someone said, I never thought about DEI outside of like the job that I do that I'm making an inclusive workplace as a manager, they never thought about it with their family, right? And I, I do agree with what you're saying. Like you can look at this and use something very similar in a K through 12 system as well. Yeah, no, yeah. even educating our own kids, right? So oh, absolutely, yeah. And it's the, the reflective part is what's really important, but then also asking like, what else do you need? 
and knowing that nobody's perfect in this work. Um, even though I do this day to day, I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly growing, thinking of different perspectives. Even what Dr. Rothwell just gave as a suggestion, I'm like, all right, I need to work on that, you know, add that to it. Um, but nobody's perfect in this work. And so the reflective work, but also being able to humble yourself and say, okay, yeah. what else do I need? Where are my resources? Who are my resources? It's really important. Um, also, Angela has uh, put in the uh, chat, I was wondering what kinds of specific uh, behavior make a person feel included. Okay, thank you, Angela. I almost got, I forgot the first part. So when I first started, I asked you all that question, like, what does it look like to you, right? And I would say some of the results that you saw was what it looked like to people or when it didn't. And then even having that, you know, hour and a half meeting week four for people to actually articulate, like, this is how they felt. This is what the goals were. This is how they did and did not feel inclusive. Um, all of that um, really comes back to what you all wrote in terms of, you know, what does it mean? What does it look like? It's going to be different for each person, right? And um, my level of feeling inclus included in a community um, it's for me, it's something as simple as when I walk into my office, into an area, I like people to say hi when I say hi back, but I know some people don't, um, but it's understanding and knowing those people um, and talking with them, building those relationships. And it takes that time and asking sometimes, but Angela, I'm sorry for your original question, but going back to what I asked you all in the beginning of, you know, what does it look like to you? It, it's going to look different for each person, um, but it's important that we have these conversations that we get to know people either that we're working with or around to know how they define and understand what it means to be inclusive and trying to build that and not assuming that like somebody said in the survey like I just assumed everyone felt included everyone is always invited it's more than just that uh, this is Shannon Freeman can you hear me I can hi I love the fact that you are starting with meeting the person where they're at in the beginning to assess. Um, and I think that's a great place to start. And I also love the fact that um, you now learning on this call and, and Dr. Rothwell bringing it up about team building, I think it all goes together really well. So the, and you're doing transformative learning and training, right? So mm -hmm. as you're looking through current state of individuals and teams where they're at and building that transformative learning experience um, after your four week, what is their first step moving toward that inclusive team building environment? I just think, you know, you've got, you've got a great foundation. You've got great framework. I just love this. So kudos to you and your work. And then I, as I work in big corporations, I can see this, you know, taking it small teams at a time, you want to measure their growth as they're going. And little by little, those smaller departments and teams then grows out to that uh, wonderful culture, inclusive culture. So kudos to you. I love this. I'm taking away a lot from this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you for your comments and also just adding to this dialogue as well, because uh, I, I had a call out asking for a team about 20, but I'm actually happy we had small because the small, I think, made a larger impact um, because it is sometimes harder to do it with, with that larger group. And it's also harder for people to uh, uh, to really um, see themselves and see how they can make an impact. Um, I think the small and moving bear, like you said, is, is exactly where we're going next. And again, thank you, Dr. Rothwell, as always giving um, additional advice, but that's why I'm also working with my talent acquisition team. And I also want to be intentional and in saying, okay, I want to check in with them in three months time. And we're close to that three months time actually right now, check in with them and be like, okay, what have you done? What have you continued to do? What can my office do to help and support? What other resources do you need? And sometimes it's, I don't know what it is, just, just help me. Um, and having those conversations with those individuals or the groups. But thank you very much for your comments. Aditi, there's just one more comment in the um, the chat. Uh, what do you really plan to use this for? Is it building self or building team? That will be our last question. Question with building self or building team? I don't see it as an either or, right? Like when I think about DNI work, um, I said earlier, it's, it's hard work and it's heart work. Like it's really heart 
work. I think we all need to grow in different ways. And so part of it is growing a team. Um, these people are not all on the same team um, for my survey that I did. Um, and it's building a better, stronger, more inclusive just workplace in general, um, not just for my division, but in general. But then I also think it's the self, like you, you can't, you can't remove it. I think it's one of those things when you realize that, oh, wow, what I'm doing is being extremely exclusionary. What I am doing is being very oppressive. What I'm doing is being like fill in the blank. When you realize that about yourself, it's one of those things you can't turn off. Like you realize it and you wind up seeing it in more than just one area. So I think it could start right in the workplace. That's where I'm located and that's the employees I work with. But I think it's beyond that, right? Um, All right. Thank you, Didi. Um, we'll stop there. Um